Greetings friends. Today I will be discussing with you recovery management which is almost the last aspect of the disaster cycle. But before we go into this recovery management, it is necessary for us to understand how did this happen? What do you mean by recovery management in nutshell before we go into the details? For example, a disaster has taken place. The response people have worked. The first aiders have done their job. The transporting people have done their job. Evacuation has taken place and people are now moving and they are coming into a place where they got to stay as comfortably as possible till such time they can go to their comfort zone. This area where they are going to be staying for quite some time till the restoration and reconstruction that is taking place is happening. The wire media for this aspect is known as recovery management. It is sufficient to draw your attention to recovery as a stage from where restoration and reconstruction takes place. This is also a stage where the responsibility of the government is almost coming to an end and they are going to hand over the responsibilities of looking after the kit and kin of a family to themselves. In other words, the families are going to go back to their comfort zone. Now this aspect is to be looked into in little detail. First and foremost, let us see what are the problems that are there when we are trying to do recovery. When we talk in terms of recovery, the thing that you should understand is response is an activity which is seen by large number of people because it has just happened. And when it has happened, the whole world is watching you and people are in a hurry. They want to know what is happening, why it is not happening. In other words, everybody's eyes are on you. Whereas when you have shifted people to a particular place for a day or two, maybe there will be something happening. For example, if I ask you, how many of you know whether there is a Bhopal gas tragedy victims uh, being looked after today and how they are being looked after? No, you don't look after, you don't know anything about it. Reason is very simple. It happened long, long ago. And today you are not in touch with it. Why? Because nobody is in, in touch with that subject and trying to show to you whether on TV or on the newspaper, etc. Unless it is a Bhopal gas tragedy day. Now we come to the next aspect. That is the people themselves. Are they ready? This is an aspect that should be asked by us when we are talking in terms of problems. Many a times it so happens that the persons who are in a camp, they are not ready to move into their places of comfort. Why? For the simple reason, the place where they are supposed to move in is not ready to take them back. Take them back for what? From the comfort point of view. That is, those comforts which were existing earlier is no more there. They have got to redo the thing. Or if the reconstruction has done something about it, how exactly it has happened, whether it is existing and what will give them the comfort. This is the aspect that has got to be taken into account. Since recovery is a process which is considered to be a long term process, financial implication is one of the most important aspects in this. And in this, the government is the one which is going to give the finances and to a very short uh, extent you will be having some NGOs or some other organizations contributing. But 95% or 98% of it has to be done by the government. And what happens to this is the priorities of the government may change. Why? Because something else has happened where the finances have got to be rerouted. And once this happens, there is a lack of money on this scale and on this particular aspect and the recovery management and reconstruction has become a little slower. So these are some of the things that we got to be taken into account. And there is one more aspect. When we are talking in terms of recovery and reconstruction, community participation is very important. You may say, what is so great about community participation? If, for example, community has not participated in their reconstruction and if they are not taken into confidence when the recovery is taking place, the cultural and social background aspects of it is not going to be okay as far as they are concerned. The cultural social background is one of the most important, especially for our rural population in the country today. And if this is not satisfying, let me tell you, your recovery management is a big failure. In other words, community participation is a must in recovery for the simple reason that we have got to ensure what? That the cultural and social background of the people to a great extent is met in our reconstruction and recovery management so that people accept it. Otherwise, it's going to be a big failure. Now, the second thing that comes 
when we talk in terms of recoveries, people in my camp, they have got to understand why and how they are going to be treated once a situation has to be overcome. Now, overcoming a situation just by themselves is not possible. And hence, you got to motivate them. How do we motivate them? We got to talk to them, tell them that this and this and this difficulty has, has happened to you, but we have made so and so arrangements for you, and that is existing there. In other words, you will be better off in your own areas. And these are the arrangements that has been made. This aspect will go a long way in reducing the psychological stress. And in other words, when you, somebody is talking in terms of psychological stress being removed by motivators, the better name for them, instead of calling them motivators, is psychological first aiders. These psychological first aiders not only understand the problem of the people who are in the camp, they also try to solve their problem by explaining to them how exactly the situation is going to be treated by the government, what are the aspects that are going to be taken into account in the reconstruction, and how they are going to be helped. In other words, this step tries to uplift the morale of the population and that is what is we call motivation. Now the thing that it should be arranged, uh, think, I mean we should think about community participation is that arrangements in the camp is a temporary thing. Now needless to point out that proper arrangements for food, stay, clothing and hygiene sanitation, these are all there as well as medical facilities. If they are not there. You will not have, not only not have a successful camp, you may not have a functional camp. You may say, what is so great about su a successful camp and a functional camp? I'll only take two examples. For example, if the place we are going, they are going to stay is a, let us say, a tented accommodation. In that tented accommodation, six people can stay. You have put ten of them. That means they are completely overstressed because lack of space, and they are trying to be stuffed into a place they are not comfortable. And once that comfort is not there, that will be the one which will be triggering off other aspects. In other words, now they start looking into it. Do I have first thing in the morning, my nature calls place, that is the urinals, the toilets, the latrines, the bathrooms, etc. And where are they? What food? So the point is, if you are not rested properly, you will start thinking in everything aspect that is going on in the camp in a negative manner. And once that starts a successful camp, will not be successful to a great extent because it is deviated from its arrangements where the community help was not sought and it was not taken into account. In other words, even if I am not able to run a successful camp, at least I should be able to run a functional camp. This should be remembered by all of us. Now, why is this word functional camp is being used by me and stress is being given by me? Please do remember friends that these people who are staying in the camps they are all people with stress and people who are foggy in their ideas and they do not have the necessary capacity to analyze their problems. And in such circumstances, what we require is a lot of understanding, proper messages to be given to them so they understand you and an affectionate behavior by the persons in the camp. This is the basic first psychological first aid. And what better example than a teacher? Why, are, why do we say a teacher is the best person for this? As a person who has handled a large number of students who may not be so disciplined and who may not be able to live up to various standards in life and society, you are handling them. We will discuss about it a little later. But at this stage, you are most ideally suited to keep up the morale of the evacuees in the camp. In other words, you have a role play in the multidisciplinary activities of disaster management. A teacher is a cogwheel which is very, very important. So don't forget that. Now we come to the next aspect. How does community accept recovery? Evacuees who are staying in the camp, don't forget they have come to the camp because they have become homeless. Don't forget they have lost their livelihood. Don't forget they may not be able to go back and do the same activity they were doing because the place and the idea and the functional aspects of the place where they are to work and get what is known as a living standards to be kept up is not available anymore. And hence, we got to teach them different aspects by which they can survive and make a living for themselves. What is this? 
skill training. Skill training means what? Caning, carpeting, weaving of carpets, making of bamboo articles, any other skilled work like masonry, etc., which can be given to men as well as women. Are men and women the only persons who are there? What about the young people? Now, don't talk in terms of making young people skilled people. Make them educated. How do we make educated? Do we have a camps for these people for running schools? Certainly not. But we must have what is known as continuous education. What do you mean by continuous education? A camp may have 25 different uh, places where lectures are being held. A for uh, kindergarten people, B for a little more uh, people, children who know something about uh, wordings and uh, mathematics, etc. Third one for readings, writings, etc. Fourth one for geography, physics, chemistry. Fifth one for something else. In other words, large number of teachers from outside can become volunteers. And don't forget, teachers come from community. And when they start working in this aspect, what is the meaning of a cam? Uh, I mean, what is the meaning of a family which is uh, well knit? A family which is well knit has a father, a mother, and children who are happy in living together. And these people are got to be made to live together means they are to absorb skills. And here, the students should be brought in. They should be taught some aspects of life and small things which they can work in the camp so that their time is not wasted. Apart from this, they also should be given sport activity. Sports is another way of looking after them for their time to ensure that their time is not wasted and they are kept active. What are we trying to tell in this little aspect of us? Acceptance of recovery. In other words, instead of brooding over the thing, I have lost everything, there was nothing else to do for me and uh, what am I going to do? Oh my God, help me. Instead of that, I should be able to say, oh my God, I'll try to do something. I'll learn this skill. I, my child is learning there. I'll go back to my home. I will be doing this. In other words, give him a vision which he can see. And by from that vision, he should be able to think, oh, my good days are going to come and I'm going to live happily in that. That is known as acceptance. Now, this is the way in which the camp should be. And in my earlier lecture, when I told you about Pinatubu, one of these aspects which I found in Pinatubu camp was the thing which made me really wonderstruck in the sense these two aspects of children being educated, not in the true sense of education that is given in colleges and schools, but to continue them in that spirit in which they were studying. Secondly, the sports. So don't forget my friends, continuous education is a meaningful activity and teachers who are coming from outside as volunteers and those educated people who are in the camp. They can become excellent material for this particular aspect. And herein comes a small little thing, community working for community. In other words, community trying to help itself. Because don't forget, government is not the answer for all aspects of disaster management. Then we come to the next aspect. It will be ideal if some members of the community are made members in plan preparation for restoration. What do we mean by this? Restoration is an aspect when recovery is taking place and then I am sending people back to their comfort area. Now government in its haste, haste means I want to quickly finish off this camp, I want to send people to their camps where they can stay, where they can live afterwards or what we can call as go back to their comfort level. Now for this particular thing, I start giving orders and make camp arrangements. But please remember have a community involvement in this. Now I want to give you two, three examples so that you understand what exactly I'm trying to say. For example, large number of people send clothings. Large number of people send clothings to people who are staying in such recovery camps. Many a times these clothings are not accepted by the people who are in those camps. Why? Because they have never used it. For a large number of people in a state like Maharashtra, in the rural area, they may be using what is, the ladies may be using what is known as a nawari and you send a salwar suit or the gents are sent a bermuda whereas he is used to a dhoti and a white shirt which is in an Afghani style. But suddenly you find something has been given to him which is of no use to him. A little bit of thinking on this aspect and a little bit of planning could have avoided it and made him more comfortable because remember this, he is now going to get a negative aspect of community help by getting things which is not needed and what does he do with that? He tries to give it back to the market and get some money. 
because that money takes care of some little need of his so instead of doing that you start meeting the situation in the way in which it is to be done for example we will take another example we construct barracks why barracks are the easiest ways of constructing a accommodation for making people stay but in the time when the uh, disaster took place was he staying in a barrack no for your information most of the rural people stay in their own little hutment the hutment may be very shabby but it has got its own individuality in other words it's an individual house of the owner of that place now you are giving him a barrack with a as a neighbor b as another neighbor many a times social and cultural aspects don't vie with this aspect of staying in a barrack and last but not least human beings who are in the urban area maximum may have a doggy to take care of but in the villages they have got their cows they have got their buffaloes they have got their sheep they have got their chicken and all these things now you can't tell them that this ba little barrack of yours is meant for you as well as all these and hence this thing gets defeated it is for this reason when you are talking in terms of reconstruction use some of the people who are in the community in the recovery area who are educated who can talk to you who can give you ideas so that your ideas and your function can match with the requirements of the people and thereby you can ensure that what you have created is a comfort zone and not a zone where discomfort is being created so please remember this aspect which is very very important i am now going to discuss with you an important aspect of recovery management and this recovery management aspect is known as apathy what exactly do you mean by apathy there are two sides of a coin for this word apathy one is the governmental apathy the other one is the public apathy now what do you mean by governmental apathy governmental apathy is we have created a situation we have created a camp we have put the people there and the work is going on so let it continue and i'll take care of it as it is coming i'll solve the problem when it comes now when you start talking of it in this aspect that i'll solve the problem when it comes you are not preparing yourself and that non preparation is known as apathy the thing that we must remember apathy is one of the reasons from the government why disasters take place now i mentioned something about public apathy what do you mean by public apathy public apathy is can be put in a word known as wait and watch now what do you mean by wait and watch wait and what means for example those people who are staying in a coastal area they will be having at least uh, 100 uh, cyclone uh, activities taking place in a year around now for if every cyclone warning that is given to them they are supposed to evacuate themselves they will hardly be staying in their area of work and they will be staying somewhere else most of the time this is not possible so what you got to think is they will always think is this cyclone for which i am being given warning more disastrous than the one which struck earlier in my time or the one which struck during my father's time in other words those agencies of the government who are talking in terms of warning they should be able to drill down to the people that i am now talking to you of a particular disaster which can be so big in its magnitude that you will not be having anything left and hence i am asking you to evacuate not don't think in terms of wait and watch but apathy by the government and apathy by the public at large in wait and watch is the thing that is going to create problems apart from this because of this aspects not being understood by both people and finance not coming in when it is required and the public are left to themselves to fend themselves and to see that they come back to their uh, places of comfort they feel i am left to myself i am going to suffer what god has given me to suffer and this business of saying i am going to suffer because god wants me to suffer is known as public apathy public apathy or government apathy it leads to only one thing that is in the recovery management you have persons who have got negative thoughts in their mind and negative thoughts in the mind will not allow positive activities to take place and this can create a large amount of discomfort now are we only having problems can't we sort out some of these things yes we can certainly sort out some of these things one we should take the help of a media media is a excellent uh, creating agency which can create such an activity by 
filming, by putting it in paper, by giving it out in uh, radio, etc. Wherein what has happened, how they are being treated, where they are at the moment, what is the intention of the government, what people should be doing. Uh, in other words, highlight the various activities by touring into various camps and also highlight what are the difficulties in the camp. Because we in the government have a habit of saying, I have created this, I have created this. For example, I can tell you one thing. I might have created hygiene and sanitation condition for 5,000 people. But if my camp is requiring, I mean having 8,000 people, my hygiene sanitation requirements has gone for haywire. In other words, the situation is now out of my hands. But who is going to tell me this? It is the media who takes rounds of the camps and talks to the public as well as inform the government what exactly is happening. And the true picture of both these things are being shown to the population at large. So that pressure is created. And pressure when it is created, a welfare state is required to take action. That is immediately they are got to mediate and they are got to take corrective measures. This is the way in which media can help in ensuring that this happens. In other words, why I am bringing up this aspect is, we should both from the government and the NGO side talk to the media. It is not enough if you project the response activities, if you project the, the disaster that has taken place, also project the activity that is taking place in the recovery, in the reconstruction activity, so that you can keep on telling people that happened, but this is also happening. This aspect of connectivity and activity that is going on ground is the thing that will help in uplift of morale of the population and this can be very useful by activating what we call as the media. Now there is one factor which is missing in most of our disaster. I would love to give you an example and then talk about it. Majority of us have a motor vehicle. Now there is something known as a motor vehicle insurance. Now you can ask yourself, what the hell I do require a motor vehicle insurance for? The motor vehicle insurance is required for the simple reason <coughs> that in case an accident takes place, you as a person who is driving or your authorized person who is driving who has created some accident is taken care of by an agency that is known as the insurance agents. Whereas this aspect is missing in disasters. We are now trying to tell government will give you the necessary uh, compensation. The compensation business of government giving should be taken out and we should bring in the insurance factor as quickly as possible. For the simple reason <coughs> that the disasters also occur as they occur in India in European nations also. But in the European nations, do you think the, the people are waiting for the government to announce some amount of relief for them? No. The insurance is taking care of them. The movable properties as well as the immovable properties are being taken care of by the government, the insurance. And people are so used to it that they say, okay, if I lose this, I will have that. In fact, to give you a small little example and not go into various details, I as a person who was required to do a little bit of rescue work in a flood rescue during a dam burst, rescued an old lady, but she was mo weeping very miserably. The reason was very simple. There were four people in her family, three of them got washed away. But there was one more item or one more person who was living. I would not be correct in calling them a person. It was an animal. It was a buffalo. But that was the only living item which was exi existing. And I was taking away the old lady, away from that existing thing which was there for last 15, 20 years with her. And that made her very miserable. So we are attached to our property, we are attached to our animals, we are attached to our immovable aspects and movable aspects. So this has to be taken care of. And the day insurance comes in for this, we will be doing a big job as far as disaster management is concerned because people will think disasters happen, but economically we can face the situation. That is what is required for us to understand. Involvement of NGOs. The point that is to be taken into account, like we said about in, uh, insurance, now about NGOs. The NGO organizations are also doing a lot of good work, not only in feeding. Good lot of them are constructing buildings and giving it to people. Now the thing, apart from this, they are also helping in skill training. Well, the skill training in various aspects makes people 
have another area where they can become functional and this aspect is very very good and if you can do this and the financial help also comes in at given stages you will find that the improvement factor will improve a lot in other words ngos can definitely give you help to some extent in finance to some extent in skill training and to some extent in comfort management so these are some of the things that's got to be taken care of then we come to a next aspect it is not good enough for us to wait for a uh, uh, disaster to take place and then start our activity some similar activity must have taken place earlier somebody must have worked on that somebody must have done some mistakes somebody might have done some very good work some good work bad work whatever it is should be recorded and this should be studied by us in peace time what do you mean by studying this in peace time so that you are able to understand these were some of the mistakes that were done now for your information in the army we have a small little word known as lessons learned lessons learned from what from previous mistakes so that you don't create the same mistakes and you improve upon it so this is exactly what we got to do in recovery management study the various aspects that have taken place various mistakes done by us so that we are in a position to rectify those mistakes and give better results because the moment you give better results the public will be happy and to a great extent you will be removing their apathy this aspect is also important for the simple reason that futuristic disasters can be planned by the mistakes that you have done and corrective steps being taken into this aspect media tv press should highlight various activities i said the thing that you should also know is the ground situation should be given as it is what do you mean by ground situation as it is many a times what happens is media becomes a little interested in projecting what the we call as their uh, their own ratings the rating can be done definitely you do it we don't say don't do it because it is that is your bread and butter but show the truth show how it is happening in other words this is just a pointer to media that while you are doing your job show the good work that is being done because the good work that is being done when it is projected properly lifts up the morale of the population that lifting up of morale of the population is what is more important than you are merely publishing this happened that happened this did not happen that did not happen in other words negative reporting first class but please do second class positive reporting also so that some amount of positiveness comes into the inmates and to the population and upliftment of their aspect can take place now i am given to understand <coughs> that i am talking to a group of teachers now what is this that i am talking in this slide the reason is very very simple my friends you as teachers who are coming from the ministry of human resource which is undertaking a ugc program for training you what for is it doing this to you first they are trying to create an awareness in you second they are trying to make you into the fulcrum around which various other people start moving around in other words every time you can't have somebody from nagpur coming or talking to you and telling you and making you become experts on that you should start becoming aware of it you should try to become experts on that you should start creating your own skill in disaster management so that you can definitely aim and see that this course which is planned for you gives a big boost for all those who are involved in this program and furthering this program because augmentation of skilled workers is our ultimate goal and that is what we have tried to, to do in this particular lesson so mine i have given you four different aspects of teaching in this four lessons of mine which actually speaking are four human factors what do you mean by human factors four different human factors wherein we are trying to tell that a person who is involved in disaster is facing this so evacuation is going to have a lot of problems so camps a lot of problems inside the camp so food distribution etc and then we are talking in terms of uh, the recovery management in other words once a disaster has taken place you have to have these four aspects coming into conclusion that all these four aspects should be fused so that you should know what i'm going to do in the beginning what i'm going to do then for that don't do what is known as yuddha kale shastrabhyasa do what is known as prepare prepare and further prepare 
in other words prepare before disaster prepare during disaster and be happy after the disaster thank you very much